fight what has been said us all. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. If you have a questioning nature and a desire to nourish your essence within you have reached the realm of truth, live from inner space, it's the next sequel to Interactive Enlightenment, brought to you by your host, Seven Bomar. Enjoy non-stop breakthroughs, advanced knowledge, and self-discovery to the core of your very essence. Join us as we map the blueprint to the cosmos and dissolve the mysteries of the Matrix. You are now connected to the Keymaker. Wholeness and balanced vibration to everyone. And thank you for tuning in again to it's now episode five of the Keymaker. And we're definitely moving through this fast. I mean, it's it's amazing that we're already at episode five. And there's been a lot transmitted. There's been a lot of ratings on uh, the Keymaker series. It's really putting a lot of things together for everyone. So I wanted to say thank you for those who are sending me those personal messages because obviously it it helps to, to know that this is um, really changing things uh, for the better for many people and allowing them to achieve balance. Today is a, it's a massive show. It's like I just pulled into a hangar with a whole cargo load of, of new, fresh knowledge that's going to allow and wisdom and experience that's going to allow us to expand even further. And so I'm going to work, you know, just to stay relaxed and calm because the message itself is is loaded with energy and obviously if I get too excited it, it may <laughs> disrupt uh, the amount of comprehension of what's really being said which is truly uh, truly important um, I would also like to say uh, thanks for confirming that you know the show is coming through clear because last show we seemed to have a little bit of trouble in the first 30 minutes however it seems that we were able to capture that first 30 minutes in recording. So those who listen to the last show, what you actually hear is you hear 30 minutes uh, first that I thought I lost and then another 30 minutes of me recapping on that first 30 minutes that we thought we lost, which was kind of interesting because it's like a reiteration of the same thing, but, you know, doing it a different way. And I, and I think it gives me it gives everyone a good idea of the range of this because, you know, just to go back in and say the same thing twice for me is a little bit difficult. Um, the first thing, cause I'm gonna jump right into this. Obviously today's show is called the biorhythmic rain, mainframe. And you'll see, uh, the reason for that topic as we, as that, of that title, as we go on, but today's show does have a disclaimer to it. Uh, as I always like to give the listeners somewhat of a disclaimer, if there's some things that are going to go on in the show that you may be, uh, need to be warned about. And, uh, the thing about this show is that they, and I always put the quotes around it will be actually heavily incorporated into today's show. And uh, I always say that, you know, my messages, like, my messages are like a heartbeat. It's more like um, the human organism itself. I mean, that's who we are. And you breathe in and then you breathe out, internal and then external. So a lot of the internal shows are, you know, we isolate ourselves in a certain tense. It's like putting in some, some putting on some earmuffs or some sound deadeners. And then we listen to what's going on within and generally those transmissions are, are very encompassing to us understanding, but we can't neglect what's going on around us and what's happening. And I think it's very imperative at this point that we start to identify what's actually going on from an entirely different level in the, ex in the external world. So that way we can, we can move on because it's very clear at this point that, you know, our families are in this our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, people that we care about, people that we've grown attached to, even if it's just on Facebook or through some kind of chat. We talk to them on the phone and, you know, there's only one race here. And, and that's the, the not even just a human race, but there's all types of species here. There's the earthlings, if you, if you may, but it's really cosmic. 
And so that's what we're going to be getting into today is about our cosmic relationship and how what's going on with that relationship is affecting us. So I want to first start off by saying there are, there are in fact, those who are really destroying the nest. Uh, we need to come to the total realization of that. If you don't understand that there is a group, which we could just call they, and they are meeting in Paris right now. This is third party, big business, the, the oil uh, sheiks, if you may. And if you're not aware that they actually exist, then truly the illusion and the mind control you must be suffering from. Because it is a fact that we do all live on this planet together, but because of money and status, it has separ there's been a big separation. And we talked about that last show is the, the king and the priests and how they go about the planet making the decisions that they want and then letting everyone else be subject to those decisions. But this doesn't come just by way of suggestion. Someone would think that they, whatever they say just goes and that's how they do it. But actually, this is due to the fact that we've lost a great deal of our cosmic knowledge. So that's what this show is about today, is about restoring that knowledge. So some have asked me uh, through different emails and I've heard different comments to step it up a bit again. And I kind of find that hilarious because I think people are just now catching up to the flat earth thing. I like to see all this flat earth stuff on the Facebook and I'm like, man, we did flat earth almost like a year and a half ago. And um, so we always stay ahead. I mean, that that's just the whole goal of this is to, you know, pursue this night and day. And if you do that, then, you know, you start to realize how this connects with yourself and then you start making your circuits, meaning that you can actually go through different parts of the entire timeline just through yourself. And but some have said, you know, they miss the old messages, you know, when I used to just every episode, it's like nothing It, it is really. What I'll say is that, you know, some people, they can get into a show and they can like understand everything that's been said. And the key maker is really that kind of series you get in and it's practical. Sometimes, you know, it takes a stretch of the mind and the body and the soul a little bit, but just by the way the message is transmitted, it's very cohesive. And I, and I like that. And I think people like that. But, you know, there's always the connoisseurs, the lovers of fringe. And, um, and they've asked, you know, that I at least dedicate one show to, you know, bringing that newness of what I've discovered all the way up until this point. Because I will say that, you know, teaching can sometimes be like, like school. You know, if you're a third grade teacher, you know, you've obviously obtained that that level because you've even been to college and you have certifications to do that. But that doesn't mean that you go into that class and you start teaching trigonometry, because after all, your whole purpose is to teach third grade. So this could be a lot like that, that you have to determine at times, you know, what is really going to be more beneficial to everyone and more constructive. And then, you know, the people who are already have that and already obtain that you know, which also listen to this message, you know, they would like to get something every now and then too. So I will say that this show is, is for you. The show is also personally dedicated to our children. You know, I, I really should have done this earlier, but I, I wanted to make sure that I had a, had a show dedicated towards the children in the future and, and those who would come and maybe one day they would even listen to this message and, and come in to get more realization of themselves. So that's what I have to say. And as I said, uh, you know, I'm going to take this as it goes today. I'm going to try to keep my breaths in and be very uh, clear when I'm transmitting the message. So your last show, we talked about the false, the false law and the false order. You know, the two words here, law and order. And that law, of course, ties into the king. We talked about the heretic and demotic script which were the first language, the first written languages and how those languages were used by mostly the royalty, Pharaoh, the priests, kings, etc., to issue the law and the order or the false laws and the false order to the populace. And this, of course, becomes the religious traditions as the erratic script is written. I think it almost even fits that heretic script is more of a king thing because it actually is, has air in front of it. 
like the heir to the throne. And then the demotic script kind of would, to me, seem that they blur a little bit, would be more of the priestly script because generally what you found in, in, in many of these scripts were just spells. It's not like the English uh, Bible to where, you know, there's a whole story going on. Generally, these, these books were just full of evocations and spells uh, to cause certain things to happen. So we talked about how these two languages were really the, the, the mother, father, and the origins of all of our modern languages, be it Greek, Chinese, or Mandarin, Hebrew, uh, Coptic, and all these languages are, are the children of these two languages. And then we talked about how when that gets into the person's consciousness, which has been done over thousands of years, it begins a process that divides the person between what would, we would see as church and state and then sets up a, somewhat of a polarity where with certain groups of people who speak a certain language and they're more religious, like even uh, Arabic is like that. Generally, people who speak Arabic, Arabic goes hand in hand with Islam versus German goes hand in hand with the law. Latin goes hand in hand with the religious Christianity and the Catholic order. So you see what language you speak, like English, English ties us into the logic and the king, the English. So you'll find that the roots to all of, all of these languages split up into two channels, which is the king and the priest. But when you pull the curtain back on old Oz, who's Acer, which is actually the, the German word for the king, the Wizard of Oz is Oz. So when you pull the curtain back, what you find is the priest and the king are actually in bed together, probably literally, in that they've cooked up this entire fallacy or false order. And the only way for us to get out of that is for us to return to our original state. So to find our original state, we must look to our ancestors, the real ancestors, not these fictitious stories that keep coming up about, you know, these galactic creatures who landed on the planet and domesticated. And, you know, all these stories are part truth, half truths. Because the true, complete knowledge says that we are all cosmic, that there's actually no separation between the cosmos and us that the cosmos is the true law and order. The order is the orbits. If the orbits were not there, then you would have worlds in collision. The true laws are like the transmutation of the gases, like at a certain temperature, something freezes. These are the real laws. This is the real order. And because we knew that, and we knew that that was all taking place inside of us, then we define the law and order by our sheer existence. And that's why they talk about, in many of the ancient texts, you know, staying with the laws of nature. And all this is really about is it's about looking to anything that's around you that's organic and natural as a quick reference point. For instance, in the ancient times when there was no phosphorus or light pollution, you would look up in the sky and you would see all these stars and you had a deep connection with that. For anyone who's ever witnessed the stars on a clear night can see how the majestic level of connection is so powerful, it triggers you and allows you to remain in the full knowledge that indeed we are great that our existence extends beyond the vault of the sky and into space and then back into us. There's a complete connection. And so this is the true law and order, not Lady Justice holding scales in a Masonic courthouse, not some licenses and some certifications and some rules and some borders. These are, this is the fabrication of that, you see. So the reason why I find that to be very instrumental in beginning the conversation like this is because remember, all of what you're seeing now that is making up this illusion, and I'll tell you how the illusion exists 
inside of something very real and very organic. You can see earth as truly the egg. People need to get it out of their minds about, you know, just trying to define planets from the level of the pictures being sent by NASA. And even whether it's flat or whether it's straight or who cares, it's an incubator. And we're all inside incubating. These are not grown supreme beings inside of this earth. Not yet. You'll know when it is, but these are, in every tense, the children. So we are first to understand that they will go after the children before they get to the point of being adepts or adults. And even deeper, why you still see yourself as already animate and already in a body, the truth is, is that we're actually still in the egg. So the egg comes before the actual birth. So you can start to define that the existence that you're having now is actually not even the birth yet. So I want to really make it clear that this law, the true law of the cosmos, says that there are vibratory speeds. And those vibratory speeds affect the color. Like if you see something and it begins to vibrate, it's like looking at a lighter. When you hit the lighter, you'll notice there's two different colors there. And it's because the vibratory speed of certain gases will make it blue, while when those gases interact with something else, then they'll become red. So these are the laws. Nobody's going to say, well, you know, let the fire be green without introducing another element that changes that law. So these are, this is the real law and order. And so the dimensions also, which correspond to the vibratory speeds, are created because of those laws. So what you find yourself in is actually a very complex system that operates on tones, vibrations, speeds, and colors. But I come to tell you that because of now thousands of years of us being off cosmic order and us tapping into world time, digital time, fake holidays, and fake archetypes and characters, what has been developed from that experience is what would be like a dream within a dream, a reality within a reality, but more clearly, an illusion inside of a reality. And this is why it becomes so paradoxical, because many people, they wonder, you know, is the world real? Is this even real? Is this a projection? And this is because the projection or the illusionary field is wrapped inside of an organic field. Someone has built a house or a temple inside of something organic. And if you look at our ancestors, our ancestors, they spent most of their time outside. Their schools, their learning, and everything they did was outside. Now, like cavemen, we do everything inside. Schools inside, the house inside. So through this process of disconnecting from the cosmos, we become the way that we are and the equipment, if you may, that we used to use to confirm our connection with the cosmos has gone dormant. I caught the last part of the previous show. I believe that's with the Wu crew. They were talking about the elongated skulls. And it's very easy when you start to go into these expanded states of consciousness where you can understand the benefit of having a larger skull. When you come out of one of these expansions with a fat headache because your pineal gland has grown so big, but the skull is not even capable of housing a pineal gland that has grown to that size. You get one of those painful headaches. And it's all a real thing. So if you don't use it, then you lose it. It just shrinks up and shrivels up. And then it could tell you, oh, you're only using 5% of your brain. Because that other 95% of our connection 
has been dormant and non-used. So where power really comes from then is from the stars and from celestial bodies like the sun. And if you want to debunk that, only person who would want to debunk that is someone who's been a part of some extensive mind control. How can I put a panel outside and pull power called solar energy if the sun doesn't have any power? Now, true enough, we have these false gods, like these gods written in these books. If for me to get some power from that God, I can't slide a solar panel out there and let that God radiate. I have to just only believe it within my mind. That lets you know the false power, real power. It will show you what it's about. It has to obey a law and an order. It must obey the vibratory frequencies. It must obey those integers that say, hey, when I use oxidized iodine or whatever it is that's in those solar panels, and then this light interacts with it, then it will generate this. But again, if we put that right next to one of these Bibles, nothing will happen because that's the illusion versus the real thing. And when you start connecting yourself to the real thing, because you've been doing that before time, then you become triggered. And that's what the cosmos does for us. It triggers us. It is our ancestry. So we are these majestic beings that have been shut off. Some people say, well, what are the chemtrails for? Well, to me, the chemtrails are a part of the pollution to cut us off from the cosmic energy. In most cities, you can never see a clear sky. So all of the emission from the ancestry, your energy, your triggers, you've been cut off from. A wall is there, a grid, if you may, that separates us from the truth. And it's up to us to break through, to collapse the falsehood that is erected by our own equipment, what we call the holographic projector. That's the things that we've been taught to believe over our lifetime, cartoons, X-Men. So that way we use our holographic projector to project only illusions. There's no He-Man. There's no Incredible Hulk. There's no Flash. But there is you. But as long as our consciousness is consistently filled with illusions, which is the movies, Adam Sandler is really not like that. Steven Seagal can't actually fight. You know, all of these illusions that are created, and you see, we have millions, if not trillions of illusions that are fed to us in our populace, in our children, our seeds, our eggs daily. So our coil then, because this is how you have to start reading this. The cosmos is a coil, so you need to read it from every single aspect. From the beginning to the end and back to the beginning again, you'll find things changing and reacting, expanding and contracting. So you're challenged to read it from a hyperdimensional level, not just, okay, well, wait a minute, how can I be an egg when I'm already a full-grown human? Well, that's the paradox. You're an egg. You're inside of an egg. You're incubating, but you also have your consciousness. Like if you would meditate and you just lay in the fetal position, you'll notice that you're still actually in the womb dreaming of this. And it all connects. Another major connection is. Well, before I say that, I will let you know that we are the stars in the cosmos and the stars in the cosmos are us. And it's real. It's the only thing that we have and the only thing that we need. And if we spent our time monitoring that, 
then we would know when any illusion has befallen us. You see, because our ancestors, they use that cosmos, that vault as a reference point because it was their calendar. So they knew, oh, we already know it's going to happen tomorrow. There's no surprises here. We just set ourselves up to enjoy it. Everything is a holiday. Everything has a law. Everything has an order. And as long as we remain in law and order, we will continue to exist infinitely. So that was the system that we were connected to. That's who we are. So we go on to realize that the oversouls then, this, these are the ones, the, as we call the macrobes. Like I always say, the, the strongest mind, body, soul is the dominant force. So those are the oversouls. Those oversouls are the octaves. While the tones, what comes between each of those octaves, those are the spirits. So now we're at the point where we decide, are you going to move into your oversoul or are you going to remain a spirit? So when we come forward from the break, as I always say, we're going to get deeper into this and we're going to start to really, really see what's happening and what we're experiencing. Radio. And we're forward again. So we're talking about becoming the oversoul. Time to keep my jets cooled over here because, again, you know, the message is heavy duty. There's quite a bit to get into tonight. And, uh, you know, I just, I've, you know, sometimes, you know, a person can say, you know, I've had enough. And truly, I've, I've had enough. I'm just, you know, I, I know a lot and I've experienced a lot. And then I just, you know, I have to pace myself and, you know, I have to be patient and then I have to deal with, you know, all the stuff that, you know, you have to deal with with this kind of thing. And then, you know, I always have my consciousness. So my consciousness is aware of certain things. And, you know, so with all that going on, you know, you hear stuff these days and then you're like, man, you know, if, you know, we don't make a move here, it's not really about, you know, our destruction because we're immortals. It's just about, you know, when are we really going to get to the major part of our existence? So that's why I decided, you know, to, let's just Let's bring it. And so let, first of all, so let's clear up some things here about, you know, so who's the real Messiah then? Who's really sacrificing their life? And the truth is, is that the real Messiahs are the mothers. Because, you know, when you really understand this or understand, as I always say, you know, you see the Greeks come in with their, their romance you know, the, obviously the, the Greeks and the Roman culture is all built on hating women or hating the divine feminine. And you can tell that really easy because they name all of the diseases after women, like lupus is a, a female wolf, you know, just to get their whole idea of they, they see everything so divided. And it's very clear. You could see it in media. You could see it in everything. They re write an entire Bible where the male is the central character just to throw everyone off balance. So then you can go ahead and divine from there that the true Messiah 
is actually the divine feminine because she's the only one sacrificing her life. And when you think about it, even when a woman brings a child in the world, you know, there's the child can often even destroy the woman completely. There's a chance and there's a risk there. But even beyond that, there's the time and the energy that must be now dedicated to this child. So this, there's a sacrifice then of the woman's life. Like, OK, well, once I have this child, I'm no longer going to be able to live just for myself. I'm going to have to live for this child and these children. And that's the whole concept beside, behind the Messiah is to be willing to die for someone else. And then when you take it to a, a massive level, you see earth is also the Messiah. It has, it's sacrificing itself to bring us through and out, coming out of this incubation. But see, the eggs, which I told you about before, the eggs are being attacked See, what we deal with with they is they don't want to deal with you as a child. They definitely don't want to deal with you as an adult. They want to deal with you when you're in the egg. And that's why so many of our mothers and fathers have experienced utter turmoil in this matrix. It's enough to bring tears to your eyes or you could cry rivers when you understand that much of what we're dealing with now in the illusion from mind control was first developed on them and even some of the things that they did to them they won't even do to us to prevent us from just being unusable you get where i'm coming from like that experimentation with uh cocoa crisp and uh artificial color number nine and sodium and at certain levels destroyed the minds of our parents in many cases. You try to hit them up with that they're the cosmos and that's the truth. And they're looking at you like, man, you know, I hope he's, he's okay. I hope he, <laughs> he's nothing like me. So you see what's happened? So that's these experimentations, because when you when you develop something, you, it just doesn't come in poof, especially this science, which is the theory of not knowing anything, basically, or playing like one doesn't know anything. That's what science is. Something's got to be proven, even though it's standing all around us and within every single uh, breath that we take, there's life, there's God, if you may. But in this process of trying to understand the paths and the laws in the order of God, there's been these experimentation, experimentations that have happened on our mothers, our fathers, our great grandmothers, our great grandfathers, even down to the great great, to attack us as eggs. So when they attack the divine feminine, when they affect her mind, they're affecting her ovaries. They're affecting her eggs. And then that's you. <laughs> you see? See, there's no disconnection. You can't say, well, one of those eggs is me. And one of those sperms is me. The universe doesn't look at that. There's no like that. There's no one of anything. One doesn't even exist. That's the big blow. That's going to be the big blow. The only person that created one was the king. Listen to what I'm saying. There's no one tree. There's no one bird. There's no one human being. That's not even the order of the cosmos. There's no one sun even. The only one is the one that gets up and says, well, I'm the only one. See, and we see that in the spiritual text. We see this in the Bible. There's only one God. You should have no gods before me. There's only one king. But this is all man-made. This is all out of law real law and out of real order. So the ones that are out, that's the good term for it, the ones that are out of real law and order, they attack the eggs. They attack the divine feminine. They attack you before you even can get on your feet. And it's a real thing. Anyone who doesn't believe it's a real thing, you're suffering from the greatest levels of the mind control. This same mind control 
that will tell you that you're nothing. You should be humble. You should never say that you're even great. But yet, in this same matrix, they'll tell you that you need to stay motivated, <laughs> keep ideas coming, and be able to encourage yourself. Do you see how oxymoronic it is? On top of that, they masquerade around the dimension all the time in these, you know, the Bugatti and the, the palace and all of this stuff. And then they make everyone else feel like, oh, you're nothing. And then we're supposed to accept that. And then that demoralizes us. And then we police each other from there. It's like, well, you, yeah, I man, you need to chill out. You're not really, you know, you can't say that you're great. You're the cosmos. How could you be anything less than great unless someone has convinced you that you're a wretch, you're a sinner, <laughs> you're no good, you, you're going to die? You see, that's the illusion. And we know this now as a fact. But to pull yourself out of the programming that has been occurring ever since you were an egg. See, now they want to tap into the idea because we know the stage. The stage is first, the inception. That's the idea of you. Then it's the egg. And then it's the production coming after the egg, the child. Then the adolescent, the adult, right? So that, those are the stages. And they're actually, on a cosmic level, planetary phases. It's like your first lunar. And then you move from lunar to solar. And then you, there's a procession of your sentience. So this is what we're protecting then for those who have that divine masculine. And this is not about just the human woman in the, uh, in the human male. This is about what's behind the eyes as we talk about. We talk about, well, what is the divine feminine truly? It's the geometry. The, in the geometry of the sexual organs themselves, you will find the ancestors and the ancient connection to who you are. Those are the what they call the sacred cuts. So we go on and we see now that so we're living in this altered reality then. And that's why, you know, they love to keep everyone doped up. I'm talking about on the real drugs. You can't classify ayahuasca and, and DMT and mushrooms. You can't classify them as drugs. Drugs are when someone has taken an element that is an absolute and then removed it, removed the absolute, like the poppy, and you just remove one chemical and change certain things and synthesize it. And then that alters what it really is. And so the person that takes it becomes in, put into an altered reality. As we talk about the cartoons, you know, the whole Jack and Jill, even the bedtime stories. No, there's no Humpty Dumpty. There's behind all of that what that really stands for. But when it's perceived by a child, these, it's not real. So the illusion, it starts there. And then this illusion, it's, it's, it's fueled by our own power and our energy, our own cosmos. So we bring life to the illusion. We use, as we talked about last show, our holographic projector. And then we combine our projectors until it becomes static. And then we live in a reality that is inside of something very real, but the, what we choose to inhabit is not. And it fills so many portions of our consciousness. And to a point now, it's run amok. And let me show you how a little bit of this works. So notice how, so we've been given this language, which is a sham. We're only even using half of it. We don't even understand what the other half consists of. There's actually words that you don't even know. And the meaning of these symbols, which they're symbols. You see, because when I, when I say a word like, let's say, W, right? The tone that I'm saying 
and the symbol are two different things. You see, so the tone is the absolute. That's, that's what we focus on, the vibration. The symbol, what if the W looked like a P? And we still called it W. You see what I mean? Like, that's the mind altering. What makes the symbol, the P, be drawn with a stick in a curve? Beside whoever said, hey, this tone P, we're going to draw with a stick and a curve. This tone W, we're going to draw with these zigzag lines. And that has nothing to do with the tone and the vibration because they can't match up. One is a higher law. The tones and the frequencies are higher laws. The symbols are lower laws. The symbols must be exact. They must be cymatic. And when you say W, it doesn't make the cymatic that looks like the W. The vibration that's coming out of your mouth does not make that symbol. So this is how the code is manipulated. And I can show you, it gets so deep that every year, around February, on a certain day, there's a plane crash. Every single year. And that plane crash gets written about in the same magazine, in the same articles, every year. And somehow, by the end of the year, because of the ripple effects from that article, everyone will buy green sweaters during Christmas more than they'll buy red sweaters. And it's that deep. Meaning that the actual instrument used to control the populace is so abstract from how we understand things to work, it subjects those who are not aware, as we say knowing is half the battle, it sub subjects those who are not aware to behaving in ways in which they don't know where it came from or whence it comes and whence it goes. But the reason why in the past, in our ancestral phase, we were resilient to this kind of thing is because we watched the cosmos. So if we're watching the cosmos, like I said, we not only know what's going to happen tomorrow, we know what's going to happen the next 26,000 whatever years. We got it mapped out that far with the cosmos. So when something starts to go off, we only see it as our responsibility to put it back in order. That's how we all became and were the enforcers. We would keep the law in the order if it even moved an inkling. And so because it's uh, being, well, actually the term is really policed because it's the police control the polls. And our stance was we controlled the polls. So if one of the polls started coming in balance a little bit, we would turn it a little bit, move it, so that way it would remain balanced. And so you can imagine none of the world would be experiencing trauma and turmoils because things would be so perfect. You see, this is where you get your energy from. This is how you become rejuvenated again. This is how you become the pure optimist that you really are is in the true realization that once we start restoring the law and order. See, restoring the law and order doesn't mean because of someone because someone's done something based on the circumstances that they've been presented in this illusionary matrix that they get thrown into this jail. And then in that jail, there is nothing to rehabilitate them to become balanced. And then they're released on the street again, only to repeat the same thing. Law and order is when we know the tones and the vibrations and the chemicals and the elements. And if one needs to be committed into the process of perfection so they can experience them true, their true self, then we've taken all of our technologies and all of our wisdom and all of our experience and we poured it into assisting them. So when that person has committed some kind of infraction or some kind of imbalance against the law and the order of the cosmos, we bring them in for true healing, not punishment. And we utilize all of the things that we've gained, our counselors, and then we say, son, or daughter, I see that the problem that you're experiencing is because 
based on what I'm looking at in your field, during five years old, you lost your favorite friend. And through that process, you started vibrating at another frequency during a time in which you should have been vibrating another. So your red turned to green and then turned to blue. And then in that process, that's what caused your error. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you through this process of correcting that. And then when you come back to yourself, you will be like all of the rest that have become perfected. And in within, within no time, all the jails will be shut down. All the courthouses will be shut down. There will be no police. There will be no money. There will be no politicians. See, you see? So it's them. They. They're the weak ones. This is a card house. At one point where our supreme cosmic knowledge triumphs, their entire domino set falls down. And guess what? I believe personally the souls that inhabit these miserable bodies known as they are begging for someone to step in. Because life will be the same for all of us when we are not on the cosmic laws. I don't care who you are. Nobody can live outside of their own law and order. Only chaos will ensue. Like these people, you know, they supposedly have all the money. These people have the worst lifestyles. For anyone who thinks that money is going to give you a better lifestyle, watch what happens if you get some. The true reality is they have problems with their daughter. They have problems with lawyers and attorneys. They have problems with people trying to take things from them. They have problems with the overall populace who don't like them. They have problems with the stock market. They have problems with Bitcoin. They have problem after problem after problem after problem. And if somehow that, e that means that you've achieved something, in real sense, you've achieved a problem. <laughs> That's it. So you can't be sold on this idea and this dream that just because you have some little bit of money that is going to make things any better. That's not how it works. It's only if you have the true connection to the cosmos, which connects you to your ancestry, which connects you to you. But see, the false system will pursue because notice how, so now we have this language, and let me just show you the play. So let's take the term BMW. You know what a BMW is? I'm sure everyone knows what a BMW is. You see, yeah, it's a British Motor Works. <laughs> or excuse me, Bavarian Motor Works, same thing. It's that car they drive around. So what happens? If you decide to name your business BMW, you know what happens. BMW has lawyers around the clock. These lawyers get paid every single year, whether they have a case or not. So they're just looking for someone who's accidentally, or won't be accident, trying to name their store, their company, their car shop, whatever, BMW, and does not have the authority and the licensing to actually represent that name BMW, which means BMW must get a cut. BMW has to be in agreement. Check out how silly this is and how this kind of thing, because there's millions of companies. There's Ralph's, there's Kmart, Walmart. You decide to go call your store Walmart. What's going to happen? But what I want you to see is, is that so now these, this combination of this, these letters from this fake ass language, excuse my, <laughs> I guess that's French, BMW now are, is owned. So what's going to happen in 300 years? <laughs> is, there gonna, is James going to be owned? This fake name that I have that they've given me? In this matrix with this fake illusionary language, is there going to be a big company called James and then all of a sudden I can't use my name anymore? <laughs> These are the things that we got to think about because, see, we're experiencing something right now 
that has encompass the a continuum, meaning we have to deal with this now. It's not about looking into the future or looking into the past. It's about being present and realizing, well, what exactly is going to, what exactly is happening here? If someone could take a combination of letters, K, F, C, and then say, well, these are my letters. Is it, are we just going to like have a big land grab over letters now, like domain names to where even if you try to register on YouTube, uh, uh, Mike Smith, Three three nine six five two. There's already a Mike Smith three three five six five two. <laughs> you see, are we going to let this go so far that we have attached ourselves to something that this system is actually saying it can own? And that's why I said a long time ago: if it can be named, it can be owned. So we come into the full realization of this, that this is what this heretic and demotic script, this was the goal of it, to get everyone attached to it and then to sell it off so someone can own it so that through the perceptions that we accumulate within this false matrix, false reality, then eventually we would be owned by it. And that's why I said the real estate is in your mind. Right now, what's up for grabs is the space in your mind. So listen to what I'm saying. You are the cosmos. That's your space. And what's up for grabs is real estate in your cosmos. And the more you fill it with these illusions of archangel, some demon creature, some cupid, and some trillions of integers that are illusionary, some false Greek gods that were stole from the Kometans that never externalized any of this? Do we think that our ancestors looked at other beings as their end all, finish all, or did they look at themselves and see the reflections? So that's what the cosmos is. It's a reflector. It's their mirror. When you look in the mirror, see the cosmos. So we're going to be going to another break here in a minute. There's still more to come. As I said, we are unloading the hangar and there's quite a bit inside of the cargo hold. And when we come forward, we'll be talking about the Supreme as a symbol and the totality of focus We'll be talking about being unmovable. And we'll be talking about the children. So stay tuned in. And uh, I do have a way of kind of tapering off a few seconds before the clock is almost up. But there's no reason in starting, you know, massive levels of, of what needs to be dissected through this conversation without having the time and space to do that. So. The little music's about to pop on in just a minute here. But just think about that. If the words can be owned.
and wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. And we're here for what I believe is the second half. And uh, yeah, we're speeding through this time, so I'm going to have to pick it up because, as I said, there's quite a bit in here to today's show. And, you know, each of these uh, pieces have been um, really personally designed to give you massive insight. So you're probably going to have to put this together later on. I, I even forgot to mention earlier, you know, you may want to grab a pen and a pencil. So even this part of the uh, of the show, you may want to get a pen or a pencil to actually uh, get some of this down because... When I come across this information, it's, it's, I'm not only going through the experience, I'm also tapping into the pure side of myself. And I identify that with, you know, the love and all the love and the compassion that I receive uh, from not only those around me, but everything across the timeline. And that's what I, I tap into that energy. And then I think a lot more deeper and I, exp- I feel a lot more deeper within myself to find some solutions through my own compassion, because I truly want to assist as many people as I can through this. But I'm also looking to do more than just talk. To me, talking is it's, you know, it's a beautiful uh, part of our creation, but it's kind of a lot further down the list to me of, of how you can truly affect um, things from from a massive level. So I involve myself in more than the, than just talking and a lot of it. I, I'm able to do through meditations and a part of those meditations, they incorporate the Supreme being as well, the real explanations. I want, I want to explain to everyone how the Supreme being, um, became a symbol. And obviously this is, this is about you because there's no God and Supreme being beside you. You are the cosmos, but so you understand it. What happens is, is that so once we moved out of the light language, because obviously the cosmos is sending lights. And when you focus on those lights, you can hear rings, you can hear frequencies coming from them. And so the last transformation is actually a symbol. And if you study cymatics, you'll come to the realization that every sound does, in fact, have a pattern to it. And so it becomes a symbol. So throughout our existence, there have been certain symbols that have, in a certain tense, encompassed more of the idea of, supre- of the supreme. And so through these symbols, our ancestors have encased their concentration and their focus. And I'll give you an example. And I actually had um, always known the symbol was very powerful, but not to what degree. And this is a symbol that we use at Secret Energy, which is um, 500. Well, it's the pattern that you get when you play 528 hertz uh, on, a, a, on a cymatic or a shaladni plate. And then it's also the pattern that you have a tendency to see when you're activating your third eye. And then that pattern seems to kind of mesh right over the, it it meshes right over the reality, the physical reality that you're looking at. Then that allows you to become um, aware or it makes other things apparent in your field of view. It's a real thing. It's an actual vivid thing. And then I also noticed that it is a supreme tool for, understanding the full focus range of your eye and then also how your eye governs the energetic flow through the body. And this was through that concave 528 herb pattern. And when I question, well, how could this pattern have such an effect? And the response that I got from my oversoul was, well, you got to think about it like this pattern has been present for billions, trillions of years. And it encompasses, when you look at it, the Taurus. And that simultaneously becomes the pattern of the universe and the pattern of how our bodies are put together. But it does come out as a two dimensional symbol. And So what I noticed was, is that the use for such things were for focus, because 
when you're stair stepping it, because, you know, at a certain point you had to get to a point where you can see the symbol or you could see the focal point itself with your eyes closed, because generally when people close their eyes, they see only darkness. So there's nothing to focus on. But the next stage in your own consciousness is to where you can actually produce a pin of light that you can actually focus on even when your eyes are closed. And this brings a whole nother level of energetics to the body. And through this focus or the process of focusing, you also steal your mind, that you actually keep your mind from wandering to the left or to the right, which is really easy to feel when you're in the higher vibratory frequency. You can actually feel when you're thinking your head or your consciousness lean off to either the left or to the right. It's very difficult to actually focus right into the center of your consciousness. And, you know, I talked about this a long time ago, but you can even see that there is a central point to your body because when a woman gets pregnant, many of the women, when the stomach gets really big, you see a line on the stomach that you can't actually see generally on a standard stomach. So the skin must be fully stretched before you can actually see that line coming down the belly. And that that's the meridian. OK, that's just like how the planet is. The planet has latitude and longitude lines and it has an equatorial line. This is the equator of the body. So there is a central point in your consciousness. And that's actually where the supreme being or supreme side of yourself actually resides. But to actually get to that space, you must focus. And so symbol, a symbol became the, you know, some people say, you know, you could just do it with a dot. So I'm not saying it's a specific symbol, but what I'm saying, the actual written symbol or something to focus on gives you something to not allow your mind to waver. And that's how God, if you may, Supreme Being, became a symbol. It had nothing to do with that this symbol means God and can get you in touch with God. That's that's like take that. It is true, but it's an externalized version of seeing that truth. The internalized version is, is that if you can focus on something, if you're going high into your consciousness, you'll notice that it can, can, can tend to be very chaotic in those spaces. So you have to, especially when you're experiencing something new, because you look to identify it. And our, our version of identification is polarized. We must say, well, this feels good. This feels bad. I see black. I see red. I see white. All those are polarizations because the mind is still working. So in order to quiet the mind, you had the symbol and the symbol would you would focus on it and then it would keep the mind from wavering. And then you would reach the true name for the supreme being, God, etc., which was unmovable. Again, the ancient names for God was unmovable in our English language. It means unmovable. It doesn't waver because, as you can see, the whole living manifested world, illusion and outside the illusion is all in motion. That's why even the, the, the books of the dead, they all say you must always prepare for change. The cosmos is always moving. But there is this other phase that does not move, and that is the supreme phase. It is unmovable. It is the rock, if you may. That's what everything is built on. And the reason why that, that's mentioned that way is because it's only on something stable can things be created. And that's why you have to find the place to build your nest. And this is why uh, that's important, is because when you remain in your serpentine state, let's say, your shield... Your coils are also your prison. See, if you build up all these fortresses and all this protection, that also becomes your prison from getting outside of the entire construct of fear. And I need to see, but I'm not saying in this world right now that we don't have to keep on guard. But what I'm saying is just like a bird, a bird builds the nest where they feel safe. So that way that they can go through the process of real birth without terrorizing the children with their fears and all these kind of things. So just bear with me and where I'm coming from and all this. What I'm saying is, is that in these higher states of meditation, what I've noticed is if you can't unsheath, if you can't take off the protection, you can't go beyond. And at times it becomes a shame in this reality that we have so many thoughts and ideas and illusions and, and, and malevolent eidolons running amok 
in our own consciousness that we cannot disrobe ourselves at any moment in order to reach the true beyond because our coil and our protection and our shield has also become our prison. You see, so that same attitude of, you know, I can't deal with anyone outside because, you know, these folks are crazy. And that may be the case, but that still doesn't mean that that doesn't produce a level of stagnancy to where we have a difficult time connecting with 90 percent, 95 percent of our planetary body. These are the, the this is what, you know, the, the repercussions behind what's going on. So just because all of a sudden we want to change one of those things, it doesn't necessarily affect us the way that we want to. Like we don't get the effect. You take, you know, your your uh, your armor off and then you go off into the matrix and, you know, don't be surprised if you come back infected. That's just what goes on, you see? So, but just realize there are states of your consciousness and where we're what we're searching for is we're searching for the place to where we can lay down our, our armor and lay down our worries and our fears so that we can be our true selves. And that, that's what this is all about. This is what we're working to secure this realm for. So that way we can really bring up our young, which is our younger side of our souls and our biorhythms in an atmosphere to where we're not at most fear. You see what I mean? That, and, then, and to understand the order to this, because this is, this is going to be a bit difficult for people to take, but because the illusion is built inside of a real mainframe, what goes on in the illusion, if it's only damaging you. Like people who are dying and getting killed and getting cussed out and stabbed and drinking and dope dealers and all this is all part of the illusion. But we have to understand the major damage is being done to us because we're being bounced around in this illusion while outside the illusion, none of this exists. There's only order. See, when we built the illusionary world on chaos, then we live in a world of chaos. We use collectively our projectors to project this chaos, this rules and systems, these languages and all of that stuff. And then the worst things can happen to us in here and it's affecting us. But make no mistake, there's no eating outside of this. If you want to answer the question, the deepest question that many people have when they start really getting deep into this knowledge about, well, why do we consume? Well, outside the matrix, there's no consumption. There's no animals attacking other animals and running the animal down. That's all part of the illusion. But every single being that is existing within the illusion is only damaging itself by continuously tapping into this field of what now has become our habitation. This has become where we live and what we do. And we've loaded all this stuff. But that's what that's where the genius is going to come from in us, because now that this has all been cooked up, we now must dissolve it. We now must, that they say, you know, you've learned, now you must unlearn. You've protected yourself, now you must learn that you don't need protection. So all of these, you know, back and forth and back and forth, see, that's, that's the weathering to me. I have to accept that, that the universe is a university. Earth is one of the classrooms. This is what it's about now for me. Like, I got to be in real time. I can't lean on some ideas and thoughts of what it's supposed to be and how it could be another way. I must deal with it right now. And then I must be able to fully take account of what's happened so that we know what to do next. And I know that this is it's not easy. It doesn't have that kind of label on it. It can be quite confusing. It's a paradox. So you could be hypocritical even. You could be harpocrates in this. Like it's all there. And we must make sense of it. We must make it stable. That's what an overtone is. That is what the oversouls are. That's what they're here for. They're pillars. So you are to become a pillar to uphold those who are taught, being tossed about, to become a safe, safe uh, uh, house for them, to become that beacon of light on the, on the rocky ocean to let them know how to guide their ships. That's, that's what the people I believe that are listening to this are all about. And so that's why I bring it to this level. So, so understand or understand this. When our children are in the womb, and again, the, the coil-like 
hyperdimensional perspective, this would be you. And this is also if you choose to bring children in the world, mothers, th those children are already hypersentient. There's nothing to teach them. There's only the dumbing down that must take place. Let us get it straight. So when we talk about oh, we're going to grow into having these powers and abilities, whoa, we already had those powers and abilities in the womb, and we're looking to restore them. And this is how you know, because the child can perceive things even through the amniotic fluid. Through the fluid, the child knows if mom is mad, if mom is happy, that through all the sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch, the child can do right through the fluid and through the pH. The child can th tell through the pH of the mother and the light that it gives off because the pH is light. P high pH is electrical. It gives off light. So the child can see these lights and is in using this kind of knowledge to determine where it's at in this matrix. OK, because this word matrix has nothing to do with the movie, by the way. The word matrix, we have to always put false matrix when we use the word matrix, because the word matrix just means a womb. It doesn't mean a movie that the Rakowski brothers made. They made a movie about the false matrix. So truly, this hyper sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, and six, seven, eight cents is already present within the child. So when the child comes into the world, that's when the dumbing down begins. And trust me, it doesn't take but six or seven months for this hyperdimensional, hyper sentient being to lose at least 80 percent of its powers in a cold hospital room to where the separ it's separated from the mother during the most critical times. It learns from that desperation. So throughout the rest of this child's life, it has a problem with being left alone because of something that happened in a phase in which it never even knew occurred. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's since you were an egg and now they want to get to the night. They want to get to the idea. Why were you created? See, this is why they want to get to the idea, because they want to mess up the whole reason on why you were created when you're unbegotten. You're not a created being. Your entry into these kind of physical matrixes is like an every day, every hour, every moment thing. But they want to say, OK, well, you know what? We want to tap with the idea you were created to serve. You, we want to tap with the idea you were you were created out of a mistake. You were created from an alien. You see, that's when you try to get at the idea. See, because they were at the egg before. And that's why you see all of these drawings where, the, you know, the two serpents, that's the king and the priest are trying to argue over getting this one egg. That be you. And that also is the earth. You see, that's what's at stake here. So let me try to tone it down just a little bit. Take a deep breath. So just remember, they're coming after your eggs. Your mother is the Messiah. Like, she risked her life for this. That's earth. Many of our mothers have died in this and come back again. You know, our planet is suffering, but it's suffering inside of an illusionary shell. The only one that's really being affected is us. So it does matter. This doesn't mean you could just write it all off like, oh, well, it's just an illusion and I don't need to be worried about it. Well, uh, excuse me. Yes, you do, because you're being loaded with this. You're soaked in this. So you must make heads and tails of it. You must make right and wrong of it. You must bring it into balance. You must create law and order. That's what you are here for. We talked about that. Mandamus, you to writ, you must come in this and say, well, wait a minute. It doesn't look like there's infractions written about these atrocities. So mandamus must be called. This means that you must come from your own consciousness to create an idea of what are the injustices that are happening here. So that way you can put them into balance, because, of course, they're not going to write in the illusion what they've done wrong. You see, so. Also for the males, realize 90% of aborted babies that are naturally aborted are male. And this is because the in development of the neural network. And this happens because of weak semen. So this is something that's never talked about. But for the males, if you're not cultivating Kundalini before you decide to go and have a baby, the baby, as I said, they're going into the seeds, into the egg. You can't have a baby 
uh, uh, that strong and able body and able minded or what I'll say is, is that you, you know, you have to do more work. I won't say you can't do anything because, you know, I definitely didn't have the A1 vegan diet when I came into this thing. But I'm telling you to increase our chances, if you may, of success, we have to strengthen our spark. And when we strengthen our spark, then that means you cultivate you meditate on bringing this child into the world. You know, you got six, seven months into holding the semen. You got OG semen ready to come into this and deal with it. See, if you really looked at it that way, like if you said, well, I'm the one, I bring in the ones who bring law and order. So you got to get back into the ancient culture. You have to get back into the ancient construct of why you will protect your mother. <laughs> and then say, well, this is strategized like the greatest uh, uh, real generals of the cosmos of all time. Say we need to bring in real soldiers. The we need to bring in real souls. How do you bring in real souls? You have they must be cultivated. They must be purified, strengthened and refined through our own consciousness before they're embedded. And there must be a plan. See, that's called planned parenthood, not that building that they got down the street that gives out free condoms. You see, so this is this is what we're talking about. This is the process. And, but, and you can see because we're in the jokey joke in the play play in all of the, you know, the Hannah Montana's in the Taylor Swift kissing her cat. Two point five million views this, you know, because we're into this then that's the illusion and it will not dissipate unless someone gets serious, but it won't be strapping a bomb to the back. It won't be, you know, calling after something that doesn't even exist, that only existed within us. It doesn't mean any of that. It means this. This is what it took me years. It took lifetimes to finally come to a point. You know, it's you don't even know you, your sequentials, meaning that you have several of you running just to get to a point where you get back to this because you have a hyperdimensional predator praying and eating your eggs, just like. You know what you see in nature when it's all off balance, the snake will try to come and climb up the tree and get into the nest and eat the egg. And it's all out of order. You see, so that's when the whole cosmos comes out of order. This is what we're dealing with here. You see, so nobody can say that this is better. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like, well, we got technology now. Man, you don't have anything if you don't have yourself. So this is the real deal. So man up, woman up, animal up, whatever you need to do and start strategizing based on the knowledge that you've been given. Like the cup runneth over. There is not enough. Uh, uh, there's there's more than enough, excuse me, of the, of the application and the amplification of this message. But it's still up to you now. When the balls put it into my court, I try to smack it home. First of all, I try to get the bases loaded first. <laughs> I'll strategize on it. So that's what we all must do if we feel serious about this or else we keep playing around, judging each other, knocking each other down like all of this. This is this is what I was saying. You know, enough is enough. So the conclusion of the message today, because we're coming into that last half and I do have actually I have about I kid you not about 40 questions. And, you know, there will be a show that we get to those questions. But as it is now, you know, there's no reason to end the season because there's quite a bit that still needs to be transmitted. So just understand this. Children study everything we do. OK. And the reason is, is that we're their source for everything. So anytime something becomes your source for everything, you should watch how you act. And many of us in life have had to depend on someone or something, and that became our source for everything. And then if you monitored us during that time to how we act, then you actually understand how, what, what we do. We monitor every move. And the reason is, is the reason why the children study us and they learn from us is because they depend on us or they die. So we are their gods. See, there's no other, see, in the construct of a consciousness that pure and innocent, that is the only place that the true concept of a supreme being can live. 
And that's what these children see us as. They're like, well, mommy and daddy, well, those are supreme beings. And they watch us and they watch how we react and what we do so that they can learn to become like us so that eventually that they can become their source for everything. But if we're sitting down arguing, fighting, you know, uh, 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 listening to Lil John and Pastor Troy or or or, or um, Rocket Man with Elton John, and that's all what we're f- filling our consciousness with. Then then they think it's okay, and they got your eggs. <laughs> your eggs haven't even hatched yet. So this is a real thing. So they have to adapt to the world that we created. And so you need to start thinking about that. We all have to start thinking about that. This is not a burden for one man to bear and or one woman to bear. This is something that we're all in. So we got one more half to this or a quarter it would be. And then we're going to finish up. And it's expansive and just realize this is here to empower you. Strange World with Mark Sargent. Saturdays on Truth Frequency Radio. Okay, let's finish up strong. And uh, there's actually still some some stuff here. I mean, it's not uh, it's not gonna desist. There's some some power. This is not a taper off. So uh, let's just continue to go with it. So so now I'm gonna, I'm, I want to I want to show some uh, some techniques here. So, you know how you can uh, really get on top of this because you know I, I have a problem with words <laughs> these days because I notice you know when they say you know you should play fair. Okay, now the word fair is means mediocre. So almost to play fair means you're actually playing mediocre, while this word cheat or like the cheater is the anagram for the word teacher. And I was like, man, what what's wrong with this language? So it's all over the place. So really what I start pulling from the languages is that you need to understand your hyperdimensional cosmic power and stop playing on the same field that they are playing on because this is not where anything really takes place. Like if you're trying to change things in the illusion from the illusion, you're not going to have much success. You must go outside of the illusion, which is the cosmos, which is you, it's yourself. You need to go to yourself, not through anything from the illusion in order to get some real control over this. And so what I start realizing is now the first thing is, and this is some of the keys and codes, some may be able to turn the locks. The first thing is, is that you need to get an entry point. So anytime that you look at the hyperdimensional mainframe, what you find is, is that there's a black hole and there's a white hole. And these are synonymous with the two major orifices, the entry and the exit points of the human body. Because just like the woman's womb and entering into the woman's womb is the interest into the cosmos. So this is like looking at in a tent the vagina and then the hole is the cosmos. That's right into space from there. And that's, of course, why men find themselves attracted to going into that space. It's all connected. But when you really start to think like this, it starts to put you on a level to where you realize you say, OK, if that's if that's that connection there. So what is this connection? And then you start to be able to map out all those connections. So I realized the black hole and the white hole are actually your mother and your father. So if you can tap them, meaning that. So this is almost like a (laughs) it's like a plan. Some would call it a plot to where if you could tap mom or dad, meaning to actually get them to adapt to certain things, then you have access to the black hole or the white hole of your own biorhythm. 
And thus, you can actually, in repairing those access points, be a little bit more successful in your hyperdimensional travel across your own biorhythmic timeline to make the repairs of the damage that has been done during the schism. This means that what, like I said, they experimented on our parents heavily with stuff they don't use now. It's almost like saying, well, yeah, I mean, we don't want to use that 20% of fluoride within the water ever again because that also leaves them incapacitated to be able to actually utilize any of these computers that we're going to create for them. So let's take it down to 5%, and then that way they're still pacified, but they're not so uh, stupefied and mentally damaged that they can't actually obey our orders. But there'll be thousands, you know, if not millions of people who have already been subjected to that kind of, uh, of damage. So it takes the light worker then. This is light does not mean white. Light does not mean black. Light means the full spectrum. So the light worker can go in and you go and you give mom or dad a massage. And during that massage, you actually feel for the points of where the damage is. And then you can visually move that out of the body, especially through the feet and through different areas. This is just intuition that you need to use. And so that's one of the things that I'm going to bring forth today for those who know who I'm talking to. But that's if you're looking for these entrance points for a different part of the sphere. Now, if you just don't happen to not have a mom or dad anymore, maybe they've left you sent in to have some kind of resonator in this world that resonates that because you always leave those portals open. But I was just where all this is coming from is that, man, if you're good, do something good, damn it. Meaning that I see these people, they just sit around and talk all day, but they will not go outside and spend at least maybe one day in one of these children's homes of these challenged children. See, those are the alms. Those are the works. Those are the deeds. And it's through that that you get more in touch with yourself because you give yourself another fuel, if you may, to begin to exist off of. And listen to what I'm saying. Like you find a lot of people who they're, they hate the system. You know, they know everything about it from flat earth all the way back down to, to uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphs to whatever. But they do that from their house. They never put in the basic work that it's that resonates that, hey, I'm actually really if it's piece by piece that I must build this pyramid, bring me the first brick and then I'll keep laying these bricks. It's like the real work, because when you do the real work, when you go into the action, there's a fuel See, because there's no action without a reaction. Right. So what is the reaction? The reaction is an actual element or a substance. This is a law. This is a cosmic law. And that element or substance, the body takes in and it puts itself on a different system beside take, 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 take or talk, 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 talk. And because those fuels are all minor fuels compared to alms. And when you've given something, you know, like I was even the other day, you know, I have a 3D printer. I found an arm that you can 3D print that is prosthetics that kids are getting and, and they can, kids that have no arm can use this prosthetic and it changes their lives. I could print these things night and day and put them together and donate a whole box of them. See, it's just, it's what you do. Because see, this is not about someone else in the sky with a notepad, keeping a notation of what you did good and what you did bad. This has nothing to do with that. This has to do with you in understanding in your points in your life, the actions that you made See, because sometimes you'll notice the body is like, well, you know, I don't need to get out there. I'm not. It's lazy and it's sluggish. <laughs> you see, like when it comes time, that's that's what I call the goat part of the body. Even if I say you need to submit, the goat will kick in right away and say, no, I don't submit. Even if I was to conclude that situ sentence with you need to submit to yourself. Because only in that stage will you find total relaxation. So remember, there is a goat side of our consciousness that is stubborn. And that goat side says, hey, well, you know, there's there could I mean, it's not going to change anything. <laughs> well, it's what is anything? You're only looking to change yourself. <laughs> and through that, the entire cosmic force will come in line with you and you will remove yourself from the illusion. You see what I'm getting to here? If things have not changed, it's because it's, you're so soaked in the illusion. You have to get 
more into the cosmos. And that's how you exist beyond this. Now, I'll tell you what's beyond, because, see, the big part of the illusion is that it generates light for you so that you don't have to generate light. And this is what people experience when they die. The lights start getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And then when that happens, they start seeing this very dank, sticky, nasty, infested part of, it's basically called the underworld. I mean, it's a real thing. It does exist. And some people actually come from the underworld. Below, behold, we saw the ladder going up and down. That means that there are some coming from the center of earth, which is the ancestors know as the underworld. This is the white hole or the black hole. And there's those coming from the top and their experiences are different because of where they've come from. So that's how you get into this is you start realizing you identify where these spaces are and what it's like to deal with those spaces. And what I found is, is that the ultimate um, penuncia, if you need the cure all for exp for these experiences is to be able to generate your own light. So then you can't be pulled down into the darkness without actually being in there with your light. So you're not afraid to go into the darkness as long as you have your own light. But if you don't have a own, your own light, then all these phantoms, and this is the subconscious mind, all the phantoms, the ignorance, everything that corresponds to darkness starts to shroud you. And you can feel it on a frequency level. So these people who are on the brink of death, this is what they experience. And because they haven't been cultivating their own light, because you'll notice that when you start to practice the technique, and this is just a visualization, you'll start to notice in the breathing when you're especially in like semi darkness, you'll see a light to your left. You can't look directly at it, especially on that frequency, but you could start to see that there's a glowing or light behind you. And then you start realizing that there are many with you. Like everything is with you. Your entire biorhythm is with you now and will assist you through your process. So again, this is advanced techniques, but still necessary nonetheless in order to pierce your way through this. Like they call it the snow piercer. You know, in this tense, you need to pierce the darkness with your own light. So some more pointers, putting the toxins in your body. Now, these toxins I've found mostly reside within the shampoos and within the colognes because you can't even put some of this stuff in your eye without even going blind. So what happens when you put it on your body, when you put it on your skin, your skin is the largest organ in your body. And then you put it on your skin, your skin drinks it, and then it gets into your body and it poisons you because it accumulates in certain parts of the body and it forms a cyst. These cysts then become the cancer cells. So if you can't really eat it, you need to actually gauge how much of this stuff you actually put on your skin because you're drinking it right away, okay? So ask yourself, can a tree grow from cologne water? <laughs> you know, you put some Jacar on or some, some, uh, 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 some Elizabeth Taylor and you put that in the water and you pour it into a tree, what's going to happen to the tree? The same thing that's happening to you, okay? And remember, different parts of us die, so that has a lot to do with how we think, how we feel, what we can tap into. That part could already be dead. That's what we're talking about, the small brain, the small organs that, you know, are calcified. These are parts that are already dead, but it doesn't mean that you won't be still walking around and thinking, et cetera. So pay attention to that. And then also remember when you're dealing with yourself that everything is bipolar. What that means is that your mom and your dad, the negative and the positive came together and created you and, and so on and so forth. For there's all these different opposing forces that are put together to create us. So that makes us bipolar. So understand how to deal with your bipolarism, because that can oftentimes be the main uh, uh, effects. That those are the main effects that many of us deal with from day to day, you know, with the cosmos and the vault moving especially without us being knowledgeable about how it's turning, some days you get up and you don't feel like it. And let me explain to you what a lot of that is attached to. It's attached to the order, the order that you've created for yourself. And, and so when something happens in your life, let's say you lose a loved one or you go through some kind of trauma, then there's a mark at that point from that trauma and it will have an anniversary. 
So let's say on January the 15th of, of uh, 1995, you had this scenario. Even the world goes through that. Even the, the Twin Towers, these kind of things become marks. And then so right around those times, we start to feel, and we're not keeping any kind of detailed uh, diaries or anything about our experiences, so we don't know what's going on. You don't know that it could be the day that you lost your great-grandmother and how you felt that day, or you lost your, your dog, Chabunky, or you know whatever the case may be. And then here it comes around, and then you're waking up, you don't feel well. You even can feel physical pains and not even know what they're associated with because you just don't have this context, this orbit this cosmic blueprint of, hey, 10 years ago on this same day I experienced this because it will come back around in the orbit less and less each time. So just remember that, that that's why our ancestors spent so much time dealing with the cosmos to take themselves off of these internal rudimentary systems and to put themselves on something greater and higher that it was predictable. See, some people say, well, you know, I want to look into the future. Well, that's the that's the only way. But you need to understand the laws and the rules and the order and the correspondence to the cosmos. Just as, as, as the sun is in the sky and every single day, you need to know what time is to get up. So if people tell you, well, oh, you're following something that has no truth to it, then tell them, well, what happens if you get up? If what happens if the sun rises and you don't get up? You're probably going to get fired. So you're looking at the power right there. So this is, you know, how you thwart this antithesis, which exists within everything. Someone will come and tell you this is the wrong way to do things. This is how the language is designed. It can always be flipped. It's a forked tongue language. So it could be flipped and turned against you to make you look like a hypocrite about what you believe and what you know to be the truth. So be on guard. And the last thing is, is that, well, one of the last things is, see, the, another one of the major errors is actually looking through the ancient's uh, uh, knowledge itself by examining whoever is the leader. Like, for instance, now when people study Egypt, they study the pharaohs. But how many people were there versus the pharaoh? And did the people live the same life as the pharaoh did? Of course not. This would be like us studying the Queen of England in order to figure out how people in Britain live their lives. It's like, how many people in England live on the same level as the Queen of England? This is kind of no brainer. So what should be studied is the daily life and the functioning of the people, not so much as us always running to this head leader or the, the ruler or the king and trying to figure out what they're doing, because they're always going to be doing something, mainly what the one the one that creates the false one is doing versus what the populace have been tapped into and how they're living. And, and especially be, um, before, or excuse me, especially during the times when the ancient knowledge had been corrupted and many of the leaders had begun to take on the path of that, that whole idea uh, of being the leaders of people, et cetera, et cetera, rather than being in service of the people. Last, one of the last things here I, I need to bring forth, and we won't actually have time for questions during this conversation, but that's fine. That gives us more shows to have in the future, is... Remember that when someone has a degree, all right, like a doctor's degree, you need to understand that that term is synonymous with why there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if, we, if a person has a master's degree, this means they have about three degrees on something that has 360 degrees. So where is that other 357 degrees? That's about how much they know, just that three degrees. And because the world teaches in degrees, this system we're in now, most of these people, if not almost all of them, don't have a whole understanding of anything. They only have their degree, their little two or three degrees or five degrees of knowledge. They don't have the whole piece. Right. The whole thing. That's what we're looking for. So just remember that you can have this mathematician that's got this master's degree. And he still can't stack up or she can, still can't stack up to a farmer. The farmer that knows everything about the animals and when to plant and when to reap. 
See, the mathematician will sit you at the table and talk to you all night about mathematic equations and things that basically make your head hurt and be doing that while they're eating the farmer's food because it's only the farmer's food that everyone needs to sustain themselves. So don't get caught up into this false idea of knowledge is what I'm saying. Everyone is good at something. Like I may not dive off cliffs and get rewards for cliff diving, but I definitely dive deep into my soul and I've been in about 80 or 90 times in trying to discover what's going on while that same cliff diver will not take one puff or drink one cup. <laughs> so understand that we all have our power and our specialty. And just because it's not something that the illusion dictates as being uh, uh, authority. Oh, you got a doctor in front of me. Oh, doctor. Oh, doctor, you got four degrees. Where, where's your other 356 uh, uh, degrees then? So stay motivated, keep enduring, and you will finish this race and you will begin something that is cosmic because that's what is outside of this egg. And don't abort, don't let them abort you. Realize what's real and what's the illusion and how much of your consciousness is illusionary and begin to fill it with the truth. And you can find that in nature, you can find that in the cosmos, you can find that in the minerals, you can find that in the elements in their process because that's the real law and order. So let's take a couple questions here real quick. We got about seven minutes according to the clock. Brian V asked, how can we tap into high vibrational timelines that are still running even though we are in these lower frequencies? And I'll say Brian, the answer to that question is look at everything that has a high vibration and then answer that question personally. Like you can even see what hummingbirds, they buzz and they move fast. So you have to ask yourself, you know, how fast are you moving during the day? Are you getting your blood going? Are you taking a jog? You know, are you buzzing basically? And then uh, look at the color, purple or ultraviolet. Those are high vibratory frequencies. Do you have some of those colors around you? Or do you have, do you, are they in your clothes? Do you have it hung up on your wall or, or waterfalls? You know, do you have some of those around the sun? So all these are high vibratory things. So it's important for us to, if we want to remain in a high vibratory frequency, then we identify with the things that have high vibration. Next uh, question, No Crow asks, if you are always filtering others or, oh man, this is a fragmented uh, sentence. So let me try it again. No Crow asks, if you're always filtering others and building walls, how do we rise by lifting each other? It seems counterintuitive to build walls, then expect others to crumble their own. It's dangerously close to us versus them. Willy Wonka was viewed as a centric hermit. Okay, so the answer that I have to that question is much of the language that we're utilizing now, as we've learned this uh, king priest language, it cannot express the context of spirituality, it's only two-dimensional at best, and you're dealing with a being that has multi-dimension. So if we say one thing at one point, then we will most necessarily say another thing at another point because we breathe in and we breathe out. We cannot breathe in and out at the same time. So we go through these phases literally with our body and we build up and then break down depending on the season and the circumstances. Every person who has isolated themselves to go within knows the power that they obtained after they did that isolation. Likewise, another person who becomes so immersed in everyone else's uh, uh, prerogatives and, and feelings and emotions and tasks, they neglect themselves. So you need to know your seasons and what is best for you. And also don't be led edgewise by your peer group and what they think is right or wrong, because each person is basically playing out their own harmonic frequency. See, the frequencies are not new, but what, a, what kind of combination a person chooses to use is what dictates what space and time they're actually in. So this is what we can actually call peer groups, is the ones that are closest to playing the tones that you're playing, you see them as people that you're like. But what happens is when you start playing another tone, you got to make sure that you're not limited from your, into, lim you're not limiting your expansion because people are telling you, well, you're not supposed to isolate yourself. 
or you're not supposed to do X or you're not supposed to do Y. So the thing is, is to know your own times and your seasons and know your cosmos. See, if everyone was on the cosmos, like we're still trying to allow people to really understand that they're actually a cosmos. This has become quite a struggle. So that means that 95% of the people you deal with don't even operate on their own cosmic time, on the cosmic orbits. So that means that there is going to be some inconsistencies that you have with them in the connections that you have with them. But when you find people that are utilizing the same cosmic uh, diagram that you're using, then you'll be right in sync. Um, there's a question here that's been asked. Somebody is asking, how do you deal with a Jesus dependent family who can't, uh, that can't wrap their heads around, hands around the truth? To me, you don't. Uh, the best thing to do is actually begin to target things that have nothing to do with the religion. That's what I do. I start challenging the diet because what you'll find is, is that generally if you go at someone right with just, hey, you need to change your religion, you know, you're still only scratching the surface in, in real tense to what's really causing the major issues, which become the diet. So I find that it's much easier to find that uh, aspect of them that they need to correct and that's going to put them into the state of consciousness that's going to rise them into the vibration to come into the total awareness. So that's how I look at it these days. But of course, in the past, I would just go right into them. Um, Tracy Witten asked if there are chakras to correspond to planets, what chakra is Earth? And my answer is, is that we are the Earth chakra, like in the context to what chakras really are. So we often fail to realize that our own presence and existence in all of this when we are looking at all the we, we, we basically we don't see ourselves when we're looking at all this stuff like you can't see the cosmos as a place in the sky. You have to see the cosmos as a part of you. And then when you do that, this is the last question. We have only a few more minutes left or a couple minutes left. But when you start seeing yourself as the cosmos rather than someplace in the sky, then you realize your position in it, that you are it. And so this is the same thing with looking at Earth as actually being separate or us being separate from Earth. So we are the entire planet. So an entire planet can be seen as a whole. That's why the chakras are seen as, oh, this is the chakra and this is corresponds to Jupiter. But what about all the species living and life forms living on Jupiter? Same thing with Earth. So the body is the same way. It is a planet with a lot of special things living within it. And so we can identify with those things because we are the earth chakra. So that takes us to, well, you know, we can't take any more questions because we're almost out. So the thing is, is that I wanted to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. It's been an amazing time. This is seven years and this knowledge continues to come forth and in abundance. And it's taught me a lot of things and allowed me to experience an incredible life and in existence that will never end. And I trust that is doing the same for the listeners, especially within uh, a lot of things that's said. And also, I would say that if anything's said during the conversation that may have rubbed you the wrong way, you may want to go back and look at it again because it may be something that you need to directly deal with. All of what is brought forth is tend to is brought forth to assist you as best as possible. I'll see you next Saturday, seven o'clock central. We do it again. And your movement, anything you can Come to teach, come to be tired Come in the likeness in the image of God Cause you can be like that With all that humbleness and all